Hi crafters, welcome to Tammyocity. I'm Tammy. Yep, that's right. I said crafters. I did not say resonators because today I'm actually crafting, not really playing with resin. And I know Claire Burgess at Claire's Crafty Corner is going to think I'm copying her, but I promise I started this project three weeks ago before she posted her craft versus resin video, which I think she posted just a few days ago. So I'm not copying you, Claire. I promise this is my original idea. And I actually did these last year as well before I even started doing YouTube channel. So you'll see some of these jars are from last year. Some are from this year. In this video, I'm making apothecary jars. And I just save random jars throughout the year. I, my favorite are salsa and spaghetti sauce jars. And if I have anything unique, like um, I think I have this cute little square jar. It's from a pesto sauce jar. So right now what I'm doing is using black gesso on the lids to kind of give them a different texture so they don't look like grocery store lids. And then it also creates a paintable surface. Although I think you can spray paint the lids even without gesso, but it gives it texture too. So I'm using the black gesso here, and then I'm going to take these lids out and spray paint them. But first, the jars. You can find how to create the jars anywhere on YouTube. So I did not post that part. I didn't record that part. It's just Elmer's glue or Mod Podge, and then you color the Elmer's glue or Mod Podge with whatever you want to color it with. You can use food color, you can use acrylic paint, you can use um, mica powder. All of those things work in the Mod Podge. So um, when I did it with last year's jars, I used Elmer's glue. This year I used Mod, po Mod Podge and uh, that's how I tinted the jars. Oh, and you bake them in the oven, 200 degrees for about 30 minutes and let them rest. So now um, that I have my jars all tinted, I'm spray painting the outside and I want them to be distressed. So with the spray paint, I am then spraying just white vinegar and that gives them a distressed look. And then I'm going to place my hand to really make it look distressed and look like a used bottle. And I, this is the most fun part of the project, spray painting, putting my hands on it, watching the vinegar and how the vinegar reacts with the paint. I'm telling you, when I'm out in the garage spray painting like this and <laughs> getting my hands on it, I feel like a kid that's finger painting. It's just so much fun. And I just love how that turns out, especially that one there. Look at the fingerprints on the side there. I love it. It's just so much fun. If you haven't done it, you have to. It's just a lot of fun to do that. You'll be filled with joy when you see how everything comes together. I make these apothecary jars for my own personal decor in my house for Halloween time. And I also give some of them away. But I'm also having a craft fair coming up. So I'm making a bunch of them. So I have a variety of jars to sell at the craft fair. Between what I made this year and last year, I probably have 35 jars maybe, <laughs> and I'm still working on them. So I'm not only doing the apothecary jars, but I'm doing potion bottles too. So with the bigger bottles, like tequila bottles, I just fill them with water, color them a little bit with alcohol ink, and then add some mica powder. And then when you shake it up, the mica powder is all swirly and pretty, and this is pretty to look at. So now onto the lids, I'm spray painting them just a black paint, and then I want the lids to be distressed as well. So I just dust it a little bit with some silver paint and some gold paint, just to distress it a little bit. Distressing the lids is almost as fun as distressing the jars, but really the jars, that's where the fun's at. Now for the labels on the apothecary jars. You don't need to do anything fancy because after all, these labels, you want the labels to look as distressed as the jars do. So on the labels, what I highly recommend is once you get your labels printed out, and I bought mine from Etsy, just a printable image. So I printed them out. First, cut the image and then crinkle it up. It's much easier to cut a flat piece of paper than it is to cut a wrinkled piece of paper. I found that out. 
Um, so you want to cut them, then wrinkle them. And the wrinkling obviously gives them some distress. And uh, I'm pushing down the label with some plastic wrap. And you guys, I did like three jars before I remembered I had a brayer. <laughs> I was so dumb. I was doing it the hard way with just using some plastic wrap, but I have a brayer. And you'll see, I finally do remember and I pull it out. But the brayer is way easier. It gets all of the label smushed down onto the glue, onto the jar, so you don't have any little bubbles underneath. And like I said, I made a lot of these jars, so it was tedious cutting out all of the labels. At least putting them on isn't as tedious as cutting them out, but I had to cut all around, making sure there wasn't any white showing on the sides, which would take away from the effect that they're old vintage labels. Um, but that is the most tedious part of the labels is cutting them all out. Some of the jars I did not distress, like this blue one. I think that blue turned out so pretty. You can't see any of the glue underneath. Some of the glue, you know, I just get kind of careless because it's going to look distressed anyway. So like some of the glue gets a little bit gloppy and you can sort of see in there. But that blue one happened to turn out so pretty that I did not want to distress it. I wanted to leave it like that. And now is a chance you can really see the distressing of the paint and my fingerprints on them. <laughs> the fun part. I love how that distressing the paint turns out with the white vinegar, just white vinegar. It's all you need. Super simple. That orange one is another one that turned out so pretty that it just did not need to be distressed. And I think it was mica powder mixed with the Mod Podge is what I hit, how I tinted that orange one. I made so many of these jars, so I took pictures with some jars, and then I took some of the jars away, and then I put in different jars so that I was able to take a picture of all the jars here at my little setting, um, and I just think they're so cute. I, I get sick of making them. Last year, I was like, oh, I don't want to make any more jars. This year, I'm kind of done with the jars except the potion bottles. I'm going to make some more of those, but... Um, when I get back to this time of year again next year, I'll probably make more jars because they're just fun. It's so much fun to paint. Like I said, that's the best part is the painting. Um, and remember the how to tint the inside of your jars. Go on YouTube. There's tons of videos. Obviously, you're on YouTube already, but there's tons of videos. You don't need me to show you how to do that. Um, but just the whole process, it's just fun. It makes, it, makes me feel like a kid again. I know you usually tune into my videos to see a resin project, and while this wasn't resin, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. I do a little bit of resin on these jars. Some of the jar topplers are resin projects that I made. Not that one, that's something that I purchased. Um, but some of these are like that, that's something I made. So uh, the jar toppers are made from resin, and then I used resin to hold them onto the lid. And I also dripped a little bit of resin from the top of the lid down the jar to add to that distressed look. Those are the potion bottles that are filled with mica powder. You shake them up and the mica powder is all shimmery inside. Um, but anyway, I sure hope that you enjoyed this project. It was so much fun to do and just get my hands in that paint. And uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I can't wait to show you my next project. Happy Halloween.